and welcome to the study this evening. Uh, I have a couple guests here with me today that may look very familiar to you. Uh, we're super excited. We're having a ton of fun, and I will let them introduce themselves, figure out where you may know them from. Thank you. My name is Justine Thorne, and I own the Early American Channel. You can find us on YouTube, and our focus is the federal period in American history. I mainly focus on 1790 to about 1830 is my limit, and we try to recreate 200-year-old uh, recipes, and I'm here with my fiance. <laughs> I'm Ron. You guys might recognize me from the Early American Channel, and uh, a lot of you know that we do have a second channel called Frontier Patriot, where we eat the food that Justine cooks on Early American, and we, we review it, and we let our hair down, have fun. And uh, so, and you have a lot of hair to let down right now. I too. do, but I'm not there gonna unbraid this. <laughs> I would not. <laughs> you should do the Fabio. That's right. Yeah, can we get a hair flip? Oh, there. come on, you can do it. Oh, it, it does it when you don't want it to do it. But there we go. Well, take our word for it. It, yeah. it was it, flipping everywhere. You can actually look at our uh, social media. We, Justine and Ron, gave us such a huge hand this week and came up for our photo shoot and helped us out. Uh, with some new photos and new gowns, new clothes, and you can see some videos that we post on socials of, of Ron's wig and all its glory. Yes, it was a, a <laughs> I mean, very Ron's fun hair. time. Really, Sorry. all this is just about Ron's wig. That's all. That's why we're, that's here. Why we're here today. We're just talking about Ron's mm. wig. Yeah. <laughs> um, but really, thank you guys for making the trip out here uh, to, to spend the last couple days with us. Absolutely. Um, just a little bit of back history. We connected with Ron and Justine um, a couple years ago, and through emails and socials, just we we knew what they were doing was amazing, and clearly everybody else thinks that thinks so now too. Because oh, you guys have you. a ton, you have a ton of growth just constantly. Thank you. Um, and so, um, hopefully you guys go check it out because it's definitely it's definitely worth it, and it's going to make you very hungry. We think what you do is amazing oh. as well. Yes, Thanks. you guys produce a high quality item, um, and I've worn clothes that are used and new from all over places and every time I order something from you guys I don't have to take it in or take it out oh. so it fits true to size which is amazing because you don't have to do any of work. Thank You're you so wearing much. right now Samson yes. historical. That's true. I, I, I gave them the measurements, very basic, vague measurements over the phone uh, or through email if you will and um, it fits perfect so. <laughs> I wish I could take more credit for that. Our seamstresses <laughs> are, are fantastic and just a super quick plug before we get back to chatting. This is one of the brand new coats um, based off of the of the Henry Cook patterns uh, that we'll be we'll be unveiling. And then Justine has on our brand new uh, the wool gown. So yep. we've got me too from head to toe. I'm wearing Samson historical. <laughs> we're we're really glad to have them here. Um, but we'd only really conversed through through online social media and a couple phone calls, and so it's been a really it's been really fun to kind of break that. I feel like for me at least to break that like professional communication barrier and just spend some time and, and that's been a good time for me. It's always nice to meet people in person. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Especially viewers as well. When we meet viewers, it, it's nice to put a face with the screen name. Mm -hmm. Yes. If you will. And yeah. you are as nice as I always imagined you would be. Okay, that is on record now. You guys heard that. <laughs> they say never meet your heroes, but this time it worked what? out. What? <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna need, we're gonna need a cut for a minute now. Um, <laughs> My, my head is not going to fit out of this room. Um, so I just want to ask you guys a couple questions um, that I have just, and it's so much fun to get to know you, and I think people enjoy that as well. Um, so you had actually started your channel before you and Ron met. and Was your yes. channel also started? No, mine was after we met. Okay, okay. So mm -hmm. what, what kind of inspired you to take this on? Oh, uh, well, I grew up mainly in Germany. I spent eight years there. I'm an, in real life, and I also say this when I go to reenactments and they ask me, what's your persona? I say, well, I'm a, I'm a colonel's daughter. That's, That's awesome. the truth. I'm a colonel's daughter. So I grew up all over the world, including Germany, and I lived mainly in Heidelberg, a very, very old city. Grew up on cobblestone streets, 18th century, early 19th century buildings everywhere, and some older ones in that even. And so when I moved back to America, that just wasn't my aesthetic as far as modern architecture goes. I, my head was stuck in the beauty of historical architecture. And so it started for me with architecture. And from there, it moved into the kitchens of these old homes. And I got curious, how do these kitchens even work? How do they operate? And I, I came to find out that they have pretty much everything that we have today. It just looks completely different. 
And it kind of works a little different, but they still have their toasters. It's true. They still have their boilers in their oven. They still have the spatula, the fork, whatever. They have all that. It just looks completely different. And so I was getting my bachelor's degree in history at the time. And I was volunteering as well as working at some of the historical sites around my area. And one of them was a, a house built in 1820 that was in Illinois. And they were a super hands-on laid back house. So they said that if you wanted to take a nap, you could literally just fall asleep in the bed that's on display as long as there were no tours. If you wanted to cook something, you were hungry, you could just whip up something in the hearth there. They were super relaxed about it. So I was left alone I there. I am sorry. I'm just, where was that again? Because I'm going to apply for any place that I can take a nap in my downtime. Anywhere in Illinois. Illinois, Illinois is, is really good about that. It's surprisingly very lenient with their historical sites of you being able to cook with fire, mm -hmm. use the things, touch the things. Uh, my home state of Missouri is way more strict. <laughs> strict, they unfortunately. Won't, they won't let you that do you that. can't touch nothing. Um, yeah it's it's a shame because these things are made to last as long as you take care of them and respect them absolutely so they're made to be used and when we find antiques or whatever people say oh are you gonna put it on a shelf you you've got to put that on no, your shelf or your collection like no and we're gonna throw it in the fire and use it and your woods your wood and, and all of that lasts so much longer when you use it it's made to have those oils right. in your That's hands true. Right. casey and i had a super formative experience when we were younger and we did our first photo shoot we were welcomed into a home um, it's an original home and they're like no we want you to pick it up and use it and we're like what <laughs> and that was like their first kind of non-museum experience like that and so now that's how we live our life like, this table is an original table mm -hmm. these chairs are original chairs and they're they're that's made beautiful. to last when you take care of them that's i'm beautiful. original too i'm actually 200 years old myself oh it's very impressive you've aged so well thank you um it's this the fireplace smoke it kind of oh, it kind of okay. smoked me so i'm like dirty preserves I'm, I'm preserved yeah. there we go wow <laughs> And we've secret. learned the deep secrets now. That's right. And I'm giving it to you for free because your friend is Samson Historical. I <laughs> I feel like that's right there. That's all people needed to know. Okay. But you also worked at the um, the Lewis and Clark Center too, yeah. didn't you? Yeah, that's right. I worked at the Lewis and Clark site in Hartford, Illinois for a couple of years. And I've just kind of, I've worked either in public schools or I've worked in museums. That's all that I've ever known. And so when I was left alone at these historical sites and I wanted to cook something, I would just fry up some potatoes in the hearth and I would stand back and look at it and I said, you know what, visually, this is absolutely gorgeous. It looks like something out of a fairy tale, but it's not, it's reality. This is the way our ancestors dressed. This is our culture. And so I bought my first camera literally the day before I filmed my first video. I had no clue what I was doing, ordered it off of Amazon, and I still have that camera, still going at it. And the rest is history. I think I was uh, working at it for about four or five months, and then I met Ron. <clears throat> and I only knew you for one week before you were in my first video. Yes. I dragged him Whoa. into it. It was awkward. I did not hmm. know what to say. I. <laughs> he said, I, was I so like nervous. carrots. That's all, <laughs> That's all he said. She was chopping carrots, and I like carrots. And he was like, I like carrots. <laughs> That's all he said. So what if you didn't like carrots? That'd have been a totally different video. <laughs> it would have been. We wouldn't be engaged right now. <laughs> when I met her, I was um, already into history, the local history. So I was part of our local group there in St. Genevieve, the St. Genevieve Milice or Militia, if you will. And I was a part of that from probably 2014, and we met in uh, 2021. But uh, so I, I'm a photographer in, in real life. And so the museum wanted to do an exhibit and bring it to life for the Battle of Fort San Carlos, which happened where the, basically where the arch, St. Louis Arch is today, and a lot of people didn't know about it, and there were 60 men from St. Genevieve, and I said, hey, I'll donate my services if we can really make this legit. So we, we set up a mock battle scene and everything, we, we photographed it, and we, we printed and blew the pictures up huge and put them in the exhibit and dressed up the mannequins with the same clothing that we wore in the photos, so it, it really came to life, and I was proud of it to work on that exhibit, and I, was just cruising through YouTube, you know, YouTube like recommends things that you mm -hmm. like. And uh, so I was like, what's early American? What's this? And so I clicked on it and I was like, okay, it's pretty neat. She's cooking with fire. And yeah, that's a legit place she's working at and she's kind of cute. And you I, like carrots and there's, I mean. Yeah, I, I'm not gonna lie. I did push pause once or twice whenever she was <laughs> chopping and I was like, okay, there's no rain. So I can maybe a, <laughs> make a move, maybe approach <laughs> nicely and, and then, you know, in a nice, um, gener um, gentlemanly way. Gentlemanly way, yes. <laughs> and and so I did. So I reached out. I said, you know, my name's Ronald Rayfield, and I, I work, you know, in Saint Genevieve. I noticed you're 
in a suburb basically of St. Louis, would you want to collaborate sometime or something? You know, do you do videos? And we started talking back and forth, and I was like, by the way, I, I fibbed a little bit. I said my exhibit is opening next week. I just took the photos for it, but it was enough to convince her to come down on the Wait op a No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so she came down for the uh, opening ceremony of the uh, the ribbon cutting for the exhibit, mm -hmm. and uh, that's when we met in person for the first time. I was sitting on the bench at the Welcome mm -hmm. Center at St. Genevieve. Mm -hmm. She comes whipping it in with her car, <laughs> and the music <laughs> blasting, like blasting. I was like, blasting is that the her? German techno music. I was going to ask, what were you playing? That's she, the German techno music. Because she grew music. up in Europe, so she's accustomed <laughs> to that, and I was like, is this the person? He's like, oh man. Did I make a mistake? <laughs> and then out gets this beautiful lady. Oh my gosh, stop it. She was wearing the, the iconic blue dress that she, you know, wore in a lot of those older videos with mm -hmm. the little white dots Thank all over. Thank you, Ron. I picked some, uh, I don't know what they're called. Flowers. Those, those flowers off the side of the roads that are purple. They're, they're basically a weed, but they're... Aww. Hey, a weed is just a misplaced flower. <laughs> yes, it's like a mutt for a flower. If, if there were mud flowers, it was be... beautiful. I loved it. <laughs> Those are wild oh, flowers, and... Ron. Jeez. Oh, okay. And you also made me something. Oh yeah. So I noticed in the videos that she hadn't made uh, mashed potatoes yet. I knew they had potato mashers, so I had a piece of walnut I was saving for a rainy day. Because when you work with wood, I also work with wood in in real life. And so you, you hoard things that you think maybe one day you'll use them. It's like having a really good box. You just yes. Keep it over in the and it's like, you know what? I'm going to make a potato masher. So I made a potato masher. I, I gift her a potato masher and, and a, a bouquet of wild purple flowers uh, right after I met her. And the rest is history. I feel like the, the, <laughs> the key takeaways here it works. are message people on YouTube anonymously and invite them to your hometown, uh, <laughs> make them potato mashers. Pick flowers on the side of the road the way you get there. And that's all. That, that is three keys to happiness. But the first one, make sure they're not a serial killer first before you reach out and try to meet somebody. That just takes all the fun right out of it. <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be a little risk, Ron. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, um, with that, you, you cook on your channel and you eat the food on your channel. <clears throat> oh, if you had to, like, hands down answer at the same time, which part is more fun? I actually like, it's, honestly, I like the part you didn't even mention, the dramas that we do. They are oh, fun. Oh, yeah, okay. Our oh, cheesy yeah. high school production level dramas <laughs> that we do are the funnest thing uh, yeah, about they are, filming. Yeah, they are, they are really fun. And we always lose money making those, by the way. <laughs> That's okay. We've never made a profit off of a single drama video. We're always in the hole, so it's a, it's a labor of love. It's, it's for the art. I mean, really. Yeah. There's a fraction mm -hmm. of the viewers who only watch it, but that fraction of viewers that watch it are like, yes! They're like diehards <laughs> about it. And then they're like, when's the next one coming out? It's like, we just got done with this one. Give us a break. A lot of kids <laughs> watch it, too. But it, it's fun. I, mm -hmm. I like I like all of it. I, I like getting to eat on my channel, but I also like getting to um, see the magic happen. Yeah, I like playing with the, the colors mm -hmm. and when and we fire. film the food and you know, with the fire in the background. Because I guess that's what initially sparked me to do it was standing back and saying, man, the fire in the background, the bowls of food on this old harvest table, it's just, it's visually speaking to me right now. So when I, when I, when we're filming the cooking part, uh, it's literally just Ron and I, we don't have a team or anything like that. So um, I'll be cooking and I direct Ron and I'll, I'll say, Ron, I want the next shot to be there. And we're a well-oiled machine. I want the next shot to be there. I want the next shot to be there. And then, she just got the vision. In yeah, in my head, I picture exactly how I'm going to cut and splice this video because each video has maybe between like 40 to 60 individual parts once you cut each clip. But I can visualize where I want every single clip to go in my head. So to me, that's really fun is to see all the colors come together and have a really pretty shot of some pears on a table. Sounds silly, but it just... It's beautiful. So Art. Justine has been suggesting pears since we started, like since this conversation has started for tell? anything. That was my favorite. I feel favorite. like I've learned some things here. Uh, so just a kind of behind the scenes of what we did this week with that. Uh, they came and we were able to uh, shoot some new pottery that we have. And Justine, um, you, she's in there like working in in our kind of in our, our humble hearth area and and creating things with this pottery mm -hmm. as well. And I was like, well, you know, we really want to photograph these different things. What, what can you suggest? And she goes, pears look really great. When in doubt, pears. When in doubt, pears. Uh, so we, we did not use pears, ironically. 
Um, I'm about to throw my cap down and walk out. That's true. That, I feel like I should have, uh, I did not deliver on the pear promise. I cannot work so under sorry. these conditions. There's no pears. There's no pears. We'll have pears next time, okay. I promise. <laughs> um, but I think we can give them a little, uh, a kind of a clue into what happened behind the scenes with our bread oh. this week. Oh, yeah. Uh, which we did actually eat. Um, and if you are somebody who does a lot of cooking and you look at us make that bread, you're going to wonder why we tried to eat it. There was a name for it. Molasses there, Mistake. Molasses Mistake. Molasses yes. Mistake. Yes. Yes. If you're wanting some Molasses Mistake, I i don't know that I personally suggest it. It was, it looks beautiful. Absolutely it, beautiful. It'll help you survive um, a cold winter's night when you're starving to death under a tree, but that's the only time I would ever recommend it. I think you could heat it up and hug it for a while if you were cold. <laughs> it, was, it was movie magic. It was, put it that way. It was very this, dense. And this morning it's a brick. It, I, didn't, I, I, I didn't poke it. We should have brought it with us in here. <laughs> it's going to be the cornerstone of our new house. That yes. We yeah. It's going to hold up so well. Um, but it, it was beautiful filming it, and it smelled good at the time. Now I don't yeah. think it has a smell. I think it's just a rock. But um, we had... Put it in the bottom of a fish tank. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a little something. But the photos and the videos are, are beautiful, and you can see a couple of those kind of teasers on our socials right now. Um, you see one of, of Ron and his wig walking down the stairs, mm -hmm. and... Uh, one no, of Justine making our our moon rock bread. <laughs> so I feel like if we we could have added some kind of leavening agent, and maybe saved it. Yeah. But eh. it, it looks the part in pictures. It does. It it, did, it turned out turned out beautifully. And I think I think it did too. Yeah. I mean, that's every, what matters. It everybody's does. seen those behind the scenes memes where they say like you think it's real, but they they poured like motor oil on it. Yes. And, and use like um like caulking around the window for the whipped cream and stuff. We didn't go that no, far. No, we didn't. We used all real ingredients. Yes. Yeah, real food. Yes. Just but unproportionalized. That's right. <laughs> and, but I think the fun thing about that, like my when we do food photography with our, our catalog, um, I don't know, I don't know how you guys do, but I think the beauty of it is like in the Im imperfections of that food. Like, yes. I don't want perfect, perfect. like caulking it's cupcake homemade. whipped cream. Like right. I want to see these kind of bruised berries mm -hmm. that we wash too much. Like yeah. I want to see Handmade. that. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what I go for too on my channel as well. Um, most people are very, very nice. I'd say 99% of people, but you'll always get that one person that's like, oh, she doesn't know what she's doing. You know, she's not using these fancy knives and stuff. And I just want to say, I am not a chef. No. I am a grandma in training, cooking yes. in my kitchen, in the in the cabin, in the middle of the woods. And that's the aesthetic that I'm going for. I'm just- Not Gordon a, Ramsay. Yeah, I'm not Gordon <laughs> Ramsay. I'm a real person. And I'm cooking with real knives that people have in their house, not Japanese chef's knives, which they probably wouldn't have had uh, back then anyway, <laughs> realistically in the middle of the woods in Missouri. Um, and I'm, I'm just a real, I'm a real person, you know? I, I, and I want to come across as being a real person that would have lived back then, not like a romanticized fake image of what it would have been. You can go I, to HBO for that. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I wanted, I mean, I want it to not look perfect, and also it's not perfect because I, I'm not that good at it, but also because okay. it's not, it's not perfect. No, and so but with love. What I've said a long time about your channel, um, since we we found you, and I don't know if I've ever said it to you guys, but I think what's really, my my thought on why people are so drawn to your channel, why I'm drawn to it personally, is that it's very accessible. Like I don't watch it and think this person thinks I'm an absolute idiot. Like. Everything about what you're doing, it's like, oh, I could do that. I could, if I, you know, took the steps, I good. could, I could create that. That well, good. It is so, it's so real mm -hmm. in that sense that it is very, like, it's not homesteady because it is, his, but it is historical. It is in that sense that, like, I can, I can make that if I wanted to. I could, yeah. I could follow this like an instructional and just right. create something that's makes my, my tummy and my family happy. That is that's <laughs> certainly a compliment, thank you. And I do have people that will email me with pictures and they said, you know, I made this receipt and I, they make it in their modern day kitchen and they send me a picture of it and they said the whole family loved it, thank you. And I just love getting those emails uh, for multiple reasons. For the first one, what you said, because it makes history more realistic for a lot of people, but also because we're keeping <laughs> our the culture of our food culture alive and a lot of people don't in this country honestly don't care for it like mm. they do for other countries and I'm trying to bring that love back to this country so it just makes me so happy when someone makes a New Year's cake for example which used to be a thing 
in America was to make cakes on New Year, but no one does cakes. that anymore. We should make way more cakes in our society. Every I, day there should be cakes. I think there's a reason for cake, yeah. I, I agree, let them eat cake. Personally, I'm a pie guy, but cake is Okay, not. yeah, I, I also like pie. Yes. <laughs> I, I can get behind pie. I can. Yeah. There should be a baked good for every day. I think we can, we can all agree. In an ideal world, there would be. <laughs> But I, I do. I feel like you guys are very, are very real, and that makes it, that makes it so such a warm and welcoming channel to to Thank watch you. and feel a part of. <laughs> and Thank so, you. Um, I don't know. I feel like that's maybe the biggest draw to to watch you guys. So it's Thank really you. cool me like being in person, being able to talk to you guys. And you guys are those people. You guys are real, and we're just, just regular people. Just normal. We just people. wear funny clothes. That's right. We just, <laughs> The best clothes. <laughs> so, and honestly, I people always talk about the comfort, and they're really not uncomfortable. They're, no, they're not. A proper fit makes everything very comfortable. Exactly. If they're not comfortable, you're wearing the wrong size, period. That is also true. Or the, the right material for the season. I mean, oh, you true. wouldn't want to wear yes. a heavy wool coat and waistcoat during the summertime, but if you wear linen, you feel nice. And, mm -hmm. and even when you're in the just, just the shirt, uh, it's it's so nice during the summertime because it's just flowing on you. It, it's it's weird to, to think about, but you'd think it'd be hot and sticking to you, but it's not. It, it's really yeah. strange. Mm -hmm. It's I, the best feeling ever when it's hot and it's just, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I agree. It, just, it feels it's, good. It's the same for the ladies too, at least in my experience in summertime. That's a question I get asked a lot. When I go to, to historical events, they say, aren't you hot in there? Oh my gosh. I, I don't know if anybody <laughs> hasn't had that I know, question. Everyone, everyone asks that. I would actually... Um, so in my normal, normal life, I am a skirt girl. I always wear long dresses and skirts all the time. I don't really like going out in public in pants. Uh, that's just me. But part of that is because in summertime, like Ron said, if you got built in air conditioning. That's right, you've got some airflow. Exactly, <laughs> but when you're wearing uh, denim pants, for example, it's like you're wearing fabric that's tightly wrapped around each individual leg. Holds the juices in. It holds oh, in no. the juices. Why? 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 But, but also, you just completely blocked out your, your uh, cross breeze there, if you know what I mean. So I actually think you look like you're hotter in your outfit than we are in our outfit. Yeah. That's that's true. <laughs> We're and wearing linen too. That polyester don't breathe. Yeah, linen no. feels mm -hmm. nice. It's natural. It does. Um, and I don't believe it catches on fire near this wool. Everybody mm -hmm. always worries so much. Oh, you're gonna catch on fire. Yeah, wool. Well, I'm gonna smolder, man. Flammable. It's fine. We've been doing this for three years and we've not caught on fire yet. No yeah. death by petticoat. <laughs> and off camera, we've been doing this for a lot longer. <laughs> yeah, off camera. Yes. Mm -hmm. And like when when we started our our historical journey, we will not show photos from my first outfit. What year did you guys ago. get into? By the yeah. way, yeah. So Casey's been in it his whole life. Um, and then I, when we got together in high school, um, I started going, and I was working off of loner clothes that from a, going to a few small festivals, and then um, it. So we again, we won't show those photos of my first outfits. They were they were a little rough. You made me curious though. <laughs> later, maybe <laughs> we'll show shoot later. Uh, no, and then but being able to find, you know, that that history for me has always been a big deal. Uh, I grew up going to um, historic houses as vacations, but we never really did um, the reenactment thing. Uh, we're we're in Central Indiana. We're also close to Connor Prairie uh, and all of that. So we had a lot of kind of small points of history, but being able to to really live it has been a lot of fun, um, and it's something that we've built together. And then our our daughter doesn't know any different anymore. Mm -hmm. Which is probably the coolest thing with historical clothing for me is to, you put the kids in this, in the little, especially the little girls in these gowns, and people are like, oh, they can't play, they can't roughhouse. I have seen oh, no. more kids in those dresses climb trees <laughs> yeah. and ford rivers mm -hmm. than it, it, kids are kids, and they find a way to play, and like especially the ones that get to do it a lot, they're so comfortable mm -hmm. in those clothes. Reenactor it's kids. how you wear in the fit, like you said. Um, you, you got to wear the britches up high. You can't wear them down low. You wear them yeah. down low, then your your pants are baggy. And, it, and when you, you can't go to wear walk, it like modern pants. Yeah, no. you can't wear like modern pants. And I'm rough on my stuff, and I'll go back again. <laughs> you guys' clothes holds up to the brutality that I put my stuff through. When I'm doing stunts on the show, I, I heard. Hey, I heard about a roof slide earlier. Yes. Yeah, he was, fell off a roof. I, I'm beating up river rats. I'm, I'm <laughs> squatting down low to pick up mm. things. Um, that's a stunt all on its own right there. <laughs> squatting in uh, britches. I mean, that's the that's problem. With... I think that's harder than squatting in stays. Squatting in stays is easy. 
really. It is. You just have to kind of do it a little different. Like, you can't really bend your spine. You just have to go vertical. You have to squat it. Yeah, you move at your hips. That's like... So it's good posture. Like a Barbie doll. You only move your legs and That's hips. That's true. Yeah, like and, a doll. And it's... Yeah. It's honestly better. My back feels better at the end of the day. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you guys have heard about medical back braces, there's a reason why they give those. It's because it makes your back super straight and you can't slouch like you're on a computer. Mm. But if you wear it for a long time, your back just, it takes that tension off of your spine. And then do you do the lazy sit ever where you're like, in your stays and you start to just kind of slump into them like a chair? I do. Especially when I have like kind of the bum roll in the back. Yes. You can just rest on your bum roll. As a lady, you would know. As a man, probably not. It's a built-in seat back. I might need to get me a pair. I, I am, unfortunately, am a... I'll sit there and I'm like, <laughs> before I know it, I'm like this on the computer, on the computer. editing or whatever. <laughs> it's like, okay, I gotta... <laughs> Up you know, whenever just, you sit it up, you hear, it sounds like a bag, an old bag of chips. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> oh my god, Ron is a rice crispy. Yes, I am. Um, or a bag of. You do become an inch taller after we return from the chiropractor. Yes, greatest feeling yeah. in the world. <laughs> but you see, if your outfit came built in with your back support, it'd be a whole different game all you day could, long. You could sleep standing up. I had somebody, um, actually one of the models earlier in the week that we were mm -hmm. when we were doing our photos, that she said. She has a two-year-old, and she's like, how do I, like, I can't imagine chasing kids in these. So I have snatched up oh, my yeah. child quick in these right. before. It is, it's, it's fun. You get used to the feeling really quick. If yeah. you ever, if you're not a historical reenactor, mm -hmm. if you're not somebody who dresses, you go and just go to one of these events that has a lot of families and sit and watch. Mm -hmm. Just watch the world yeah. start to, to happen around you because kids don't, kids haven't changed. That family dynamic mm -hmm. really it's the same and there's a wonderful painting that I love and it's from the 1600s that I'll, I'll hopefully I can we can bring it up at some point but it's a uh, this little baby and this mom's trying to drink out of her cup and he's got his hand on the cup and oh. she's like side-eyeing him and I was like that has been the same thing for hundreds of years oh yeah and so I have you guys ever had a moment at a, like a historical site where you just went man the veil is so thin right here like the, yes. this between here the, the, between time yeah. Like, this place is that wrinkle. Yeah, there's been a few times uh, we actually realized that back in November at Port de Chard, we were there for their uh, winter encampment. So it's a little smaller than their summer one, so it's more laid back. Uh, it was towards the evening, and that place is in, it's remote, as you know. It's, yes. There was no barges going up the river. There was no airplanes. There was no cars. Which is so there rare. There was no so modern rare. sights or sounds. And I was like, hey, I'm there. You know, mm -hmm. and that's usually how it is at the end of the day at these mm -hmm. events. The ones that camp over once once the, the spectators go because they're everybody mm -hmm. is dressed modern, mm -hmm. and the cars are gone, and it's just the reenactors. They stay in their clothes. Uh, everybody's cooking on the campfire, so you really mm -hmm. it's easy to put yourself in that for just a little bit. Yeah, just that even sometimes it's just this like split moment, and you're like, wow, yeah. new core memory. Like that's it. Right yes. There. What about you? Do you have a, a place or a thing that's giving well, you that feeling? Well, uh, Ron and I, we enjoy going hiking a lot. And when, when we go hiking, we'll be out in the middle of the woods and we'll stop on occasion and we'll just stop and say, can we hear anything modern? And unfortunately, a lot of the times you still do. Even when you're out in the middle of nowhere. An airplane. You can least. hear an airplane, <laughs> a helicopter, a barge in the distance. Uh, but then every rare once in a while, it's so rare, but sometimes you stop and you just hear birds chirping. Yeah, and that's it's beautiful. It. It's beautiful. And then you realize, gosh, we kind of ruined the world, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, you, we, you just can't get away from it anywhere. <laughs> Our biggest uh, enemy with film and videos is there's always a lawnmower. There's always mm. somebody brush hogging with a tractor or a dirt bike going up the road or a diesel truck. And it's... It's just, it's polluted, it's noise pollution. Noise, noise pollution. And I, I know I sound like an, an old fart saying I, I want it to be quiet. There, there's a time and place for everything. I love the hot rod and, and ride my dirt bike, but when I'm dressed up like this, I want to hear only nature sounds. Water running, birds chirping, I don't want to hear. I feel like the Grinch. You know, the noise, noise, noise. Noise, yes. noise, noise. <laughs> I, think, I think there is a place though in, in this modern world where people crave that simplicity. Oh yeah. And I think that's why... I know we're seeing a lot of people come into the reenacting community, the historical mm -hmm. community, and I think it is, while it was not necessarily a simple time, there's a lot of social complexities. There's a lot of historical, you know, unease and unrest in that time. Mm -hmm. um, but in a sense, it is the 
the simplicity where you're not bombarded with right. so many things all day long. It every was day. it was more straightforward than things are today for sure. And we tried to um, make it cool for young people because nobody really enjoyed their history class. At least I didn't. I didn't it was an older it. person giving a lecture about. 1492 you know and it's like this is not fun it's not hands-on mm -hmm. so it's usually the older generation and then i'm not knocking that at all mm -hmm. but if you want to attract young people to get into it young people have to do it yeah so it's amazing that you guys have taken on this adventure you guys are basically the same age as, as we are yeah mm -hmm. so it, it's really neat to see somebody selling the stuff too not just People wearing the stuff, but you guys are making it available for people. Making it it's possible. actually a two-faced assault. We've got you guys. <laughs> oh, we'll sell you the things. You guys show them how to use it. There yes. we go. History exactly. is fun, and you don't have to to do cooking. You don't have to do battle reenactment. You could be a printer. You can be a doctor reenactor. There, there's all kinds of mm, sure. lots of life whatever, like today. Back whatever then. your thing is, there's a there's a historical branch of that that you can explore. It can be That's music. True. Whatever yes. you do in modern Pottery. life, you can probably take it and twist it a little bit and be that person 200 years ago. Oh, if you're a sure. welder in modern life, you can do blacksmith or something yeah. or casting. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's amazing. And casting is fun. It's it is fun. It's so much fun. Um, Playing with danger. <laughs> yes. Yeah. There's definitely some evidence from yesterday with a blowtorch that was taken from me. Um, yeah. But uh, so maybe don't take my word on that. But. Um, yeah, I think that and you find these people that have these artistic skills, like this, you know, these Common Ground Pottery made this set here, mm -hmm. and it's based off of uh, ones that have been found and that are, are housed in the Chipstone organization, mm -hmm. but you, you see these different artists taking and, and creating something, and I think the coolest thing for me is that, like, I took an embroidery class and I did very, very poorly. Um, there's no evidence left of how that went, but... <laughs> She said, only for, memories. That's right, only <laughs> memories. And even those, I think, are a little twisted. Uh, no, but the, the instructor said, I can look over your shoulder and I can make you, for a short amount of time, make your stitches a certain way. As soon as I walk away, you are going to stitch a certain size stitch. And I think the cool part about that is, if you look at existing pieces, that person's hands are going to be the only ones that made it exactly that way because mm -hmm. that's that's how their brain makes things. Right. And mm -hmm. So I think that those historical variations are really neat looking at artisans today as oh, well. Oh yeah, well, so my dad is an antique collector and I'm sure he influenced my love of history as well. But now that I'm an adult, I am also an antique collector as well. Mm -hmm. And Ron, Ron is very well aware of my problem. And so um, like we'll get an old clock, for example, that's dated to about 1830. I just love l turning it over and looking at it and looking where they struck all the nails in there. Mm -hmm. They put all the glue and I like stopping and thinking, it's 200 something years ago, someone cast that nail into that. And it's still there to this day. It's and got I a wonder, story. It mm -hmm. has a story. I wonder who did it. I wonder what his life was like. I wonder, was he married? Did he have kids? What kind of house did he live in? What was his favorite food? I mean, it's just, the everyday objects tell a story. But nowadays, we have kind of a throwaway culture. We sure. we buy yeah. something that's really, really cheap. It's not an heirloom anymore. We throw it out. No one cares who made it. No one cares about the story. It's not artisanal. It wasn't made by an, a master craftsman. So who cares, you know? Mm -hmm. But these old pieces, I can, or even something like this, I can take it and you can tell it's handmade and I can look at it and say, uh, who made this? What right. was their story? Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. Do you have a specific type of piece that you collect? Um, I definitely focused on Federalist period. Okay. So it has to be um, 1790 to 1830. But not a specific, like, like I have chairs or books. Tables. Books are my thing. I, res I rescue okay. lots of them. Yeah, we do, we do have a, a good amount of books. I would say anything to do with a lady's dressing table is very interesting okay. to me. Like old brushes and vanity bottles and things like that. It's very interesting to me. <laughs> And Ron, do you have I, your specific? I don't have a, a favorite. I can appreciate a nice Windsor chair or a nice uh, a nice three legged you know little table, mm -hmm. a anything like that. I can appreciate something like that. It just depends on can I afford it and does it look cool. Now Fair for enough. you though, you are you are obsessed with anything patriotic. Uh, yes, I am. Yeah, you are. I feel like there were clues leading up to this. Yeah, anything Revelation. that has a, a federal eagle on it or. 
any any stars, anything patriotic, Ron. You have to admit, you just I, I you am. go crazy for it. I do. I do. <laughs> Even if it's bicentennial chic. Oh. It's, oh. Some oh. things are cool. Some things are really gaudy. But don't uh, worry. I make sure that don't most of it don't make it through our front door. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I don't have this Some little pieces. John Hancock decanter in my house oh, for the sure. bicentennial. But uh, keep, I keep those small and to the side, Ron. Yeah, keep it in the closet. <laughs> I, I like the, the original pieces as well. Mm. I just sometimes I can't afford them, but the, I, uh, I do like mm. them. I like looking at them. I like the, uh, I really like the painted pieces. I, I can appreciate a nice piece of mahogany that's been oiled. But I like seeing the, the paintings, like the Dutch, the way the Dutch do it. I have a book, uh, I forget what it's called, but it's uh, it's from like the 1750s. It has like these designs that the, the Dutch were painting on yeah. boxes and stuff, mm -hmm. like a, uh, a marital quilt box or something. I love folk I love art. the art. Yeah, folk art. That's I love, another thing I can I love say. it. Really? That's right. I, I collect shaker boxes. Yeah, she, I does, never, I she never... does like the wood boxes. Yeah, yes. and I, I love the, the painted uh, wedding boxes too. Yeah. Okay, see, yeah. I... You said folk art, and I immediately my brain went to the like the paintings where everybody's a square, and that I'm okay mm. with that too. See, I but I do not get behind that. I I like it, but because to me it's it's a part of American culture, so I appreciate it for that. But That's fair. I, but I prefer the more floral kind of folk art. Okay. Yeah. I okay. actually painted a small. Uh, oval shaker wood box uh, that was made of maple. <laughs> I know it's a sin to paint a hardwood, but I did it. And I, I painted the uh, folk art people on it, and that's what had the ring in it when I proposed to her on her birthday. Wow. Yeah, it was, our, it was our ring box. He painted him and me, but like it looked like early 1800s folk art. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Or kindergarten did it, whatever. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not the best painter, but it was a thought that counts. It was made with love. Yes. <laughs> Oh my gosh. That and the potato masher. And the potato masher. Gentlemen, it works. And like 15 other things that I've made for you. Oh yeah, that too. <laughs> and on the, the potato masher, you, you kind of reap the rewards, right? Because now she's got to make potatoes. Yes. I think most I other ladies... I feel like ladies, that's a plan. And they're delicious potatoes. Yeah. Time. Oh, thank you. Most other ladies, like you meet them for the very first time, the very first date. If they give you a cooking tool or a vacuum or something like that. Oh effect, man. Get the yes. right woman. They, they, they'd, they'd give you a slap, but... Nah, not me. I like practical gifts. I do too. You know, I don't like it when someone gives me like a little crystal paper weight. It's like, thanks, Grandma, but <laughs> I'd rather get something I can actually use. Yeah, it you makes know? my life easier. That's, exactly. That's the thought. It yeah. makes your life easier, and that is a beautiful, special gift. Yeah, absolutely. I always, you know, well, I was actually talking about this not not terribly long ago with Casey, but like, Casey always gives me things that make my life easier and are, are practical, and like that to me that shows that he was. He was paying attention to what I was doing, that's what true. my day looks like, and said, yeah. this would make her life easier, that thought. And so that's that, true. I feel like that's special. The thought it's is... more special that way. I try to matters. do that. And sometimes I'm silent about it, and then sometimes I'll, I'll say, you know, I got this because of this. But uh, usually I'll just kind of do it on my own, and it, it's ready, whatever it may be. Hmm. So it's, it's good to be observant. So take notes, guys. That's right. Get yourself a nice wig, yes. nice coat, yes. make a potato masher. It's Oh, and that's your checklist for this observe. weekend. <laughs> but if you watch right. my videos in Early American, do not give your lady an ice cream churner as a present. <laughs> that is that a terrible job. She lost on both ends of that. She had to make it, and then I <laughs> ate it, and then the cabin stunk. But. Yeah, because he's lactose intolerant. <laughs> Long story, but yeah, make it ice cream back then. And half One hour. <laughs> you can't find somebody who makes that stuff, or at least for a reasonable price. So we we made the ice cream yeah. uh, sabatier. That's a piece of stove pipe I got from Home Depot, <laughs> and put awesome. some rivets and a handle on the stove yeah. and cap, and I was like, it'll work. We're not. We didn't cook in it. It's not being heated, right. so it doesn't. It's not toxic. Yeah, because it is galvanized. So yeah, but we're not actually heating anything right. in it. It's all cold. See, that's when, that's when you have kids and you're like, all right, see you in about an hour and a half, buddy. Exactly. Let's go shake that. That's why they all had 10 kids back then. That's it, right. It is, a, it is a very delicious ice cream, though. It's very <laughs> decadent and rich. My favorite yeah. is always the peach ice cream. Peach ice cream. Oh, that God. sounds I've amazing. I've never had that. That sounds amazing. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so you guys have to come back in the summer and we'll make peach ice cream. Okay. Fast. Strawberry ice cream. Wait, you guys are going to make it, right? Yeah. Hey. I mean, I, we're going to actually bring Peyton in here and let her sit okay. and make it. <laughs> You signed me stuff up already? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds well, good to me. I don't want to be sitting in this spot anymore. Oh, yeah. Fine, fine. That's right. So, has there been a food that you're like, that was quite literally the worst thing I've ever eaten in my life? 
Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, I need to know. Okay, I'll say mine first, and then you say yours. Okay. Okay, I might offend some people out there. Uh, I might, I might, yeah, I might offend people, but I don't like wine. Is anyone offended yet? You're Are a wine you drinker, aren't you? Actually, only I'm mm. very picky about like my wine, and it's not the expense. It's I, I want ones that taste like juice. So oh, okay. I'm also gonna offend yeah. wine. I'm yeah. offending yeah. wine people also. I yeah, I, I do not care for wine, especially red wine. So I I made a dessert. That's receipt yeah. once that was basically barley boiled in red wine with a little bit of, of cinnamon sprinkled in it but it was the proportions were absolute <laughs> insanity it was two cups of red wine for like one cup of barley and just a little bit of cinnamon and it ended up being a wine gruel oh, it was no. so gross the name sounds like how I feel like it's gonna taste. It was, it looked, Barley it looked gruel. interesting. It was a bright red oatmeal pretty. looking thing basically, <laughs> but it tasted horrible. So it had that heavy like tannin flavor to it with the yes, wine. Yes, yeah. it just mm. tasted like oatmeal wine. It was, it was very weird. Yeah, I see, I, I love a good, like a cranberry wine, a fruity wine, uh, but I don't, that dry red, I cannot get behind ever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just because it was, it's an old receipt, it doesn't mean it's good. Just like today, you can pick up a cookbook from any store and cook out of there. And there's probably gonna be one recipe out of that cookbook that just ain't it, but they wanted to meet a page quota. That's right. It was the same back then too. They put some recipes in there that were just pure madness. Mm -hmm. Some were great, some were not so great. Mm, okay. Now, what about you, Ron? Well, we made the, the shrimp pie. Which I did that not sounds eat. Delicious. That was so good. You didn't I, even eat it though. I don't eat. You it. have to pick something else. If you didn't eat. He it. has a phobia of shrimp. Here. What? <laughs> He's afraid of shrimp. I I don't like you seafood, and so I didn't eat it. I, you I live think on I, a river. I, yeah, a freshwater yeah. river. There you used to be still, shrimp. There's, there's there used to be food. shrimp in the Mississippi River. <laughs> I won't eat nothing out of that Mississippi. That's well, fair. Yeah. <laughs> not today anyway. That's fair. But I will. I do like like a catch of the day like battered cod and stuff but i, I don't you like fish for dinner i did actually <laughs> but i don't like shrimp and so i actually ate chicken that day i think no yeah. but the going back to my least favorite thing that we cook with though is um uh, caraway seeds i don't oh. like caraway seeds i huh. i like rye bread whenever you can dip it in like some dill dip but if it's caraway seeds and it's like inside of the queen's cakes or or heart cakes i forget which ones mm. they are the, the the dessert i don't like it so this is fennel like, it, oh, it's such a strong. I don't like we that can't. Either. We don't. We can't. We're like. Fennel makes me sick to my We're stomach. almost allergic to fennel for some reason. It gives yeah. us issues that require a toilet. Averse to fennel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but so to explain why he's talking about caraway seeds back in the 18th and early 19th centuries, vanilla extract was not really a thing, especially not like it is now. Now there are some references to people cooking with vanilla extract but very, very rare, very expensive. Mm -hmm. So instead of that, to flavor their cakes and their pastries, they would use rose water, lemon zest. I hate that too. And a lot of the time they would use caraway seeds. I just got a, a rose sugar mm -hmm. and I, mm -hmm. I'm excited to try it. That sounds it. good. But it's, I feel like it's gonna be a very fine line between delicious mm -hmm. and bathtub water. Like there's not oh. gonna get in between. <laughs> you it can't smells add like much. old lady's perfume to me. It smells like my grandma brought her perfume and just on the the food with the rose water. We did cook one time with orange orange flower, flower and water. And that was tasty. Yeah. I, I did like that. See I, I have orange. a very I have a very old fashioned palate, so I'm okay with the floral flavors. And I like the caraway seeds a lot in cakes. But nowadays no one really does that. So you eat it and it tastes like rye bread, a very sweet rye mm -hmm. bread. It's not everyone's cup of tea. Have you ever tried? I have not, but I actually really prefer that type of savory bread, though. Like that, or that yeah. kind of sweeter, like I, like if I get a cake, I don't eat the icing, I eat all the cake parts. So I, I feel like I, I would don't be like okay. icing. Yeah, I don't, I don't like icing. I do like icing. And now, like, I, I don't want them together, is my thing. So on a hard uh. day, there's definitely some icing that lives in the back of my fridge and it comes out and we just sit there with a spoon by ourselves. You're one of those people. I am. I have an emotional support icing. Um, but like on a cake, I will eat the cake out of it. So they, they can't wow. be together. Okay. I've never heard that before, but I respect it. Yeah, it's... My opinion of you has not changed. Okay, that's good. I felt like felt like we were on rocky ground there after oh, the yeah. after the wine, and now we're with the cake. Table. Just well, done. Well, then let's flip the script. What's your favorite thing? Yes. Okay. Um, 
My favorite dessert or savory? Thing, your favorite thing, if you... Yep. Okay, there was an Irish dish that I made one time that was lamb slow cooked with potatoes oh. and onions in a Dutch oven. Was that the casserole it's, one? Or no, it wasn't the casserole oh, okay. one. Okay. Um, it was in our Irish cooking video and they were all early 1800s receipts. That was the best food I've ever put in my mouth. It doesn't matter if it's the 21st century or the 1800s, that was the best thing I've ever eaten. Some things, I love lamb. I love lamb I love too. Lamb. Sometimes you make things and they would pass for today. You would not know if you were served that at a mm. restaurant on a modern looking plate in a modern setting. Well, I feel would... like Irish food's like that all anyway. Like, yes. we love first of all, it's all things that I love. Right. The entire country is a, a comfort food. Yeah. Yes. And we love Irish food. There's a lot of Irish immigrants in this country mm. and their food tradition and culture has blended in. So I think Americans just love oh. Irish food, whether they know it or not. Well, and I married a man named Casey Sampson, so Irish food is a must <laughs> in our house. Uh, you don't, you do not escape it. We eat a lot of potatoes. Um, that's why we have really good stays. So to hold to all hold all my in. potatoes oh. in. Um, so what about you, Ron? What was the best thing? The best thing. Um, there, there's lots of great things, and but the the one that comes to mind is the chocolate tart. I knew it. From I knew from the, uh, I guess it was Valentine's was, Day video last year. It was year. a Valentine's Day video. It was mm -hmm. the most decadent dark chocolate kind of pie, tart. gooey put, 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 blah, 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 pudding tart thing you've ever ate in your life. And it was made with the American Heritage chocolate, which Ooh. has like that spice kind yeah. or whatever mm -hmm. it is in it. It was amazing. It was. It was actually the best chocolate tart we've had, again, modern or historic. It was the best we've ever had. Yes. And if, if you could overdose on chocolate, you would overdose on this. That's <laughs> like, I felt like I was in like a food sugar coma. Decadent. It, I just needed like one more bite and a soy milk and I would have just passed out. Probably. If you think people are obsessed with chocolate today, you haven't seen anything yet. People back then were obsessed. Well, and it's a very different flavor of chocolate yes. though. Mm -hmm. And that's what thick, I like. It was thick, it was rich, it was spicy. There was chocolate, yes. chocolate mm -hmm. tea. I think Martha yeah, the Washington. Coca tea. Mm -hmm. And that's, have you guys actually had that before? Yeah, yeah from, yeah. Uh, yeah, the same one that Martha Washington used to, to drink, the cacao tea. We, mm -hmm. And we read she'd order that by like the, the pounds yes. and pounds. So we sell that, and I, I believe um, Candy Murray in your hometown also has it in her shop. Yes. But yeah. um, it's, it's so different. Um, and people ask me, like, is this like drinking hot chocolate? And mm -hmm. it is not at all. There's no milk in it. There's all, no milk. Unless and, you add it. Right. And even then, like, it's not. It's not rich and creamy. It's it's if if chocolate was a tea. It I don't know how else to explain it. Right. So if you we actually have that in our store online. You can go order it. We have one that's a cinnamon variety where they ground up cinnamon sticks. Oh, I've had yeah. that one. And that yeah. one's that one's I feel very fall. I it smells it's just warm so and spicy. good. I like the orange one too. I think there's a cacao orange that they make. I've not tried that, but I that one? I don't. I need to. I need to to get a hold of that one. I love I love orange. Flavors. Yeah, me too. It's very, it's very fragrant. That's my favorite one. The, the plain cacao one, I don't care too much for. The cinnamon one's pretty good, but the orange one it. is the bee's knees. I feel like it needs <laughs> that little bit of lift, like it accents the flavors. Uh -huh. There's only one ingredient in the original one. Yeah, it's cacao. The, yeah, yeah, it's the shell, the cocoa shell that they've taken off and roasted, and that's mm -hmm. it. It's actually very healthy for you. It's full of antioxidants if you need an excuse to drink it. Right, and it's got like, it gives you, it's got not the same kind of caffeine that, that coffee does. It gives that's you just true. energy. Right. Yep. And there's actually modern companies making, like, as a coffee replacement, all of these like cacao shell oh. things. Um, yeah. Because I like to go on kicks and find these things, and that's, I really dedicate for like two weeks to one thing. Uh, especially in my kitchen, and that was one for a while. And it's it's a good it's a good thing, but I do love my coffee. I'm yeah. a coffee drinker as well. So if you had <clears throat> one tool in your kitchen that you're like everybody needs this historical tool, it's not the ice cream maker. <laughs> what would it be? <laughs> oh, don't worry, I wouldn't have said that anyway. Uh, hmm. Man, that's a good question. One tool. Thank you. Well, everybody on. already has the, a rolling pin of some form. Yeah, that's very important. And a, and a as well. spatula. I will say I do. I really like my birchwood whisk. Oh. Okay. I really like that thing. People ask me all the time. They say you only use it once and then you have to throw it away. I've had that thing for two years. It's hardwood. Yeah. Birch is hardwood. Yeah, birch does not grow mold easily, and it's literally just the branches of birchwood that you tie together to form a whisk. Really. But it's very flexible. It's very lightweight, and the way you clean it is you just whisk it in hot soapy water, yeah. 
and then you take a, a clean rag to dry it, you know, just like squeeze it around it. I've had that thing for two years and it's as good as the day I bought it. And it works better than the modern metal ones that are like, you know, they're just looped around. And I hate Because it has so many thing. little things. It's like a little broom they're that you're noisy. just using. Yeah, it doesn't, yeah, the it metal doesn't ones. scrape the bowl or, That's or anything. True. This one's very flexible, so you can really scrape the bowl. That would be really nice using all of these the, the pottery, the ceramic bowls too. In the yeah. Front, yes. I mean, because you, I think of like a modern kitchen, the stainless steel looks in the stainless steel bowl. That's not really going to mm -hmm. hurt if you start whipping, whipping that thing. You're going to chip your bowl eventually. Oh yeah. Mm. I like that makes the, sense. I like the crocks that the uh, the flour and stuff go in. Yes. I, I hate mm -hmm. the modern ones that got the little latch and then the suction cup. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're using this stuff, you don't need to keep it for a year and keep it fresh with, with that's, seals that's like true. It. So like the ones you mm -hmm. guys sell, the lids just sit on it. Mm -hmm. And you just reach in, get it, or dump it out. Well, we did bring up my personal salt jar yesterday for some fun <laughs> photos uh, that we'll, we'll definitely have to show everybody. You know, we're not going to tell them exactly what they were because I feel like they need to experience that visually yes. first. Yes. Um, but, and it's a, made by a historic artisan and it's a little ceramic jar with, it's got a, it's got a poison stamp on the front of it because it's <laughs> funny, but that's what we keep our salt in. And because if you're using it, if you're cooking, if you're living in your kitchen, you're going to go through it fast enough. It's not going to matter. Exactly. That's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I would say a second thing is my gridiron. Oh, okay. I, I mean, to have basically a barbecue grill that weighs 10 pounds and you can just carry it wherever you want is pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, because you don't have, I mean, a barbecue grill, they're heavy. You have, if you have to use coal for it, whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't know. This is like a portable barbecue grill. You just put a, you just. <laughs> Holds two sticks. I feel like I'm a, 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 a salesman right now on a TV ad, but you just put some sticks underneath it. And light a fire, and boom, you got a, a grill. <laughs> you got a grill. You can put anything. You can put a potato on there, some steaks. Like you can anything. use it as a trivet, too. Fish. That's a good shrimp. Um, it, yeah, so we it's, use it's it. It's flat on top, so we, we have a round one and a square one. Mm -hmm. And you guys sell both of those. And when one's being used, if we got to put something else in the fire that we don't want to hang, we'll just set it on the gridiron. Oh, yeah. I, I love, um, oh, gosh. We have a couple small trivets that even when we're at events and we're mm -hmm. camping and it's cold, I set them underneath my wood stove and mm -hmm. let it like it's nice to keep things warm without overcooking them that way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I feel like trivets are severely underrated. Oh yeah, you can use a trivet for, for a million anything. things. Even yes. like when we do a big dinner, I'll put them on the table to hold the hot pots off the table. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. You have to put down a runner first because they get very scratchy. But mm -hmm. but I feel like there's so many things that we can use that were historical that that are gonna last a lot longer than things you buy modernly. They're gonna you. They're gonna serve a better purpose and a much wider purpose because I feel like you're working with tools that have a lot more multi-use than they're more heirloom type items yes. because I mean something like a, a gridiron. Um, I actually I also collect. I have another thing I didn't mention when I mentioned like why I collect antiques. I collect actual real cookware from the early 1800s and late 18th century. So you could not hand down your refrigerator like that that, no. that thing's gonna break in 20 years you're well, if you're, you're lucky yeah your if you're lucky skillet from ikea yeah years five now. years and that's then not the, gonna have a handle and then the <laughs> the seasoning comes off and you have to throw it away but then your great grandma's cast iron that gets handed down mm -hmm. your great grandma's refrigerator is probably still working but that's that's, that's, that's another that's another, other, that's another that's conversation, conversation right there right. those ugly green ones the, my grandma has one from the 60s and it is still working. The pea green color fun. makes them last longer. Yes. I, for, I firmly believe it, that. Well, the uh, uglier, the everybody better. Everybody in your family. My washer, <laughs> up until recently, my washer was uh, had wood paneling and a, and a cream color on it. Oh, and it wow. was that thing was a tank. Yeah. <laughs> it would out, outlive a nuclear blast. That's probably. right. I'm going to sit inside it. That's my safety. The only things that are going to survive after a nuclear blast, they say cockroaches and your great grandma's fridge. That's but it's it. asbestos. That's oh, yeah. actually I don't know if it is, but uh -oh. <laughs> but the period of pieces that yeah. she's found, uh, we have a, a hanging skillet, which is pretty neat. It's it's just like a deep skillet and it has like oh an the arch. yeah and yeah we have a bunch of stuff now. But see those things la are lasting hundreds of years. So if you get yourself like something from Samson, like uh, us, their grid irons or their their ovens and reflector ovens and all that, those things are going to last. Oh yeah, then, heirloom items. I, 
And everything mm. tastes better with a wooden spoon. I firmly believe that. I believe it as well. Yeah. You're, you're not tasting the chemicals that everyone else uses. When you <laughs> use those silicone spatula things, if you wash them, sometimes they pick up the, the taste of soap. Yes. Yeah. Like bleach. So when you go to cook with them, it's time, especially in something mm. hot, it, it's or, like the flavor goes off the spoon into the... Or like you wash it and then you let it dry and you're like, why is that still dirty? Yeah. On those. And like, if you forget your wooden spoon in your pot for a little bit, it might char... But you're not gonna die. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to be a reenactor to use wooden spoons. You know, and yeah. anyone can benefit uh, from going to your website or looking through your Thank catalog you. and picking out items. I mean, like, yeah. even something like this set here, yeah. reenactors will love something like this. But if, you know, I almost feel like this would work for any time period. Even a modern oh, yeah. minimalist kind of household like would like something jar. like this. Or can, put can flowers or in it, but uh, <laughs> even if you're out camping in the 18th century, you would like it. So this yeah. is like the third ceramic piece that Justine's been like, we could put flowers in it. I put she flowers, put flowers <laughs> in it. everything, especially the butter churns. Does we, we can only churn so much butter because there's just the two of us in the cabin. But we can't have too many flowers. So she'll pull out the, the, uh, the paddle, the, the dasher. Pad, the dasher, yeah. she'll pull yeah. the dasher out and just put stick flowers in it, and it, it works perfect. Yeah, that would look nice Multi with flowers. She's <laughs> like, man, we could... You send Ron out, you can get some purple ones, we'll put them in yeah. here. Come on, Ron, do your thing. <laughs> Give me some flowers. Mul Multi-purpose. That's right. Mm -hmm. And even some methods of things that we learn in the history we can apply to today. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. And that's on many levels. Gardening, food preservation. Yeah. yeah. Just... The way you act, even. Sometimes, you know, mm. people are more reserved back then and more, I'll say, generally or ladylike. Oh, yeah. You can apply those. Manners. Yeah, manners. Mm. You can apply the same manners and morals to the, today and... Uh, it makes a difference. Yeah, I, I fully believe that. I think there's a lot of there's a lot of wisdom and benefit, and and you have to you have to pick and choose, right? It's a different time, and you know there are there are some things that that don't translate. Right. Uh, most of those are, are some oh, rights, shot. right? But um, <laughs> but it, as far as you know, you know, basic manners and etiquette and things like that, you know, it. I don't feel like we've ever been like, man, this world needs a few less manners, like it. Apparently, some people out there think that way, but I don't. No, at this table, we believe the man. We believe manners are, are mandatory. Mandatory. Yes. Um, it's like that book, the uh, the rules of civility that George Washington yeah, edited actually, from an earlier. Yes. Book. Yeah, he copied those down as a kid. There's like a hundred things in there. Oh yeah. And it's like, don't fidget. So we actually sell a reproduction copy of that. Do you? Um, and oh. a pamphlet copy of that, and. Um, then I bought Peyton a modern book, our daughter, a modern book that explains them in layman's terms. Oh, okay. And so that's, that's <laughs> super fun. But yeah, it was copied down from earlier work, um, which is really funny because like we, when we homeschool our daughter, uh, we do copy work a lot. We're like, all right, here's practice your handwriting, write this out and, and copy <laughs> this thing. And so, um, that's what George Washington was doing. He was copying and, and perfecting right. his penmanship. And so that's. Kids don't change. Like, no. George Washington as a kid is still doing copy work. Mm -hmm. So I hope that Peyton is in the other room listening. And since George Washington is her hero, oh, yeah. even George Washington did copy work. She is the sweetest kid oh, ever. Thank you. Reenactor kids are They're built some different. of the nicest kids I've met. Yeah. Uh, Ron and Justine were here yesterday mm -hmm. morning uh, when we were doing a photo shoot with some of our, our friends' um, children who are her reenactor kids. And those little boys were sliding across the floor like penguins in oh, their yeah. waistcoats. And I wanted to join them. I, just, I was like, <laughs> I, can, I can slide far of them if I really get a run at it. And, and he's like, I, I think I can win. Let me show you something here. <laughs> the wall's going to stop your run. <laughs> yeah, I would yeah, They're gonna, run into the wall. But well, it, you're not doing it right. Let me show you. <laughs> oh, yeah. But they were, they were just being kids. And that's the most fun to watch. Like, all the photos of kids in our, in our catalog, they're all reenactor kids. And we're like... I put on these clothes, and then for last year we kind of put out little animals like um, little little toys like zoo animals. We're like, all right, go play. We just took pictures of them being kids. Mm -hmm. So I I know we've been here a while, um, and you guys have got to head back home. But I appreciate so much having this time to spend with you guys, and we're super excited to come to their wedding. Yeah, yes. that's right. Yes, great. Three and months from now. Oh. Thank you for coming to our wedding. We yes. really appreciate that. I'm Thank so you excited. for having us out for an opportunity like this. We've, we've never been 
a, a subject to photograph for no. items before, so it's really neat to, well, and to help yeah, showcase I, your guys' wonderful items. I can't speak for you guys, but I genuinely hope that we get to do this again soon, and I'm sure we can coordinate something so to too. have you guys come out and, and stay with oh, us yeah. and spend some time. So Thank you. Uh, but thank you guys for coming. Thank you for being here. Make sure you check out their channels and get some truly wholesome ideas for recipes and things that just make your heart and your family and your tummy happy. And uh, we'll see you again next time. Thanks so much for being with us today. See you guys later. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>